Occupy by Noam Chomsky. New pamphlet series that just came out. Talking about um, no one person can define what an anarchist society will look like. That goes against the very concept, the very notion of what anarchy is. There are people who think you could stretch it out in great detail, but my own feeling here, and I essentially agree with Karl Marx, who is a German American, just like Albert Einstein. Is that in Kurt Vonnegut? And Rocky, not, I think, no, Country Road, John Denver, Elvis Presley, uh, Eisenhower, Leonardo DiCaprio. I want to say Sandra Bullock. I saw her talking German. I don't know if she's German or just picking it up. But So, I essentially agree with Marx that, that these things have to be worked out by people who are living and functioning in freedom and work out for themselves what kind of societies and communities that are appropriate for them. So, it's going to be a bottom-up movement. And no one person is going to say, okay, here's what we're doing now. What we're going to say in Occupy is like, okay, here's how we're going to govern ourselves. There's no liberator. The people must liberate themselves. Uh, Chomsky talks about how it's impossible uh, to respond to opinions. You can respond to arguments, but you can't respond to opinions. If someone makes an assertion saying, here's what I believe, well, that's fine. He can say what he believes, but you can't respond to it. You can ask, what's the basis for your belief, or could you provide me with some evidence? Uh, what do you know about human nature? And actually, we don't know much about human nature. So, yes, that's an expression of his belief, and he's entitled to make it. We have no idea, nor does he have any idea if it's true or false. But it really doesn't matter. Whatever the truth turns out to be, we will follow the same policies, namely trying to optimize and maximize freedom, justice, participation, and democracy. These are the goals that we'll attempt to realize. Maybe human beings are such that there's a limit to how far they can be realized. Okay, we'll still follow the same policies. So whatever one's unargued assertions may be, it has very little effect on the policy and choices. So the chapter on inner occupy, I haven't read much of it. Um, there's a section on Zen and also what it is that you need to do if you're a protester, which I think are important. So let's read a little bit about Zen and then about the um, uh, uh, laws on the books that you should do if you're a protester being confronted by the police. So Howard Zen says this. To be hopeful in bad times is not just foolishly romantic. It's based on the fact that human history is a human is a history not only of cruelty but also of compassion, sacrifice, courage, and kindness. So to be hopeful in bad times is not just foolishly romantic. It's based on the fact that human history is a history not only of cruelty but also of compassion, sacrifice, courage, and kindness. What we choose to emphasize in this complex history will determine our lives. If we see only the worst, it destroys our capacity to do something. If we remember those times and places, and there are so many where people have behaved magnificently, this gives us the energy to act, at least the possibility of sending this spinning top of a world in a different direction. And if we do act, in however small a way, we don't have to wait for some grand utopian future. The future is an infinite succession of presents, and to live, now, to live now as we think human beings should live, in defiance of all that is bad around us, it itself is a marvelous victory. So it's not easy for me to write a few words about Howard Zinn, the great American activist and historian. He's a very close friend for 45 years. The families were very close too. His wife, Roz, who died of cancer not long before, was also a marvelous person and close friend. Also, the somber, also somber is the realization that a whole generation seems to be disappearing, including several other old friends. Edward Said, Ekbal, Ahmed, and others who were not only astute and productive scholars, but also dedicated and courageous militants, always on call when needed, which was constant. A combination that is essential if there's to be hope of decent survival. Howard's remarkable life and work are summarized best in his own words. His primary concern, he explained, was the countless small actions of unknown people that lie at the roots of those great moments at the, that enter the historical record. A record that will be profoundly misleading and seriously disempowering if it is torn from these roots as it passes through the filters of doctrine and dogma. His life was always closely intervened with his, intertwined with his writings in innumerable talks and interviews. So, Howard, no, uh, Howard Zinn changed the consciousness of a generation. Okay, so Occupy protest support. Thousands of people have been arrested exercising their freedom of speech and assembly while participating in Occupy actions. If you or someone you know needs legal assistance or has been the victim of excessive police force or brutality at a protest or gathering, Contact the National Lawyers Guild. 
a nonprofit federation of lawyers, legal workers, and law students who join in at Occupy protests and monitor police activity on the street and in jail. The National Lawyers Guild has been providing invaluable legal advice to movement folks who get inadvertently arrested at protests, as well as those who are consciously commit uh, to civil disobedience. What laws and police practices should I know about? You have First Amendment rights to protect lawfully. Uh, you have First Amendment rights to protest lawfully. You're allowed to protest lawfully. You have a right to hand out leaflets. You can hand out papers and leaflets, rally on a sidewalk, set up a moving picket line, just so long as you're not, uh, you do not block building entrances or more than half the sidewalk. The law requires a permit to march in the street, rally in a park with 20 or more people, or use electronic sound ampl amplification. In New York, a mask law makes it unlawful for three or more people to wear a mask, including bandanas. The NYPD aggressively enforces this law. Police will seize signs on wooden sticks, metal, and PVC piping. It's okay to attach signs to cardboard tubing. The police will not allow placing signs on fences or trees. If you hang a banner from a bridge over a highway, you risk arrest for reckless endangerment. What do I do if the police talk to me? You have a constitutional right to remain silent. If the police try a friendly conversation, you can say nothing and walk away. If the police say move or give some other order, you may ask why, but you are not. You are advised not to say anything more. Notify a legal observer about the order. If the police ask to search you or your bag, you should say no. I do not consent to a, a search. If the police search anyways, you are advised to continue to say, I do not consent to a search. I do not consent to search. I do not consent to a search. If you physically interfere with the search, you risk arrest. If the police question you, including asking your name, you may say nothing and walk away. If the police prevent you from leaving, ask, am I free to go? If they answer yes, you may say nothing and walk away. If they answer no, say, I wish to remain silent. I want to talk to a lawyer and wait for the police to arrest or release you. What can I do to prepare for a possible arrest? Why, write the National Lawyers Guild phone number on your wrist or ankle. Call this if you're arrested or if you see an arrest. Carry in your pocket several quarters to make telephone calls and a phone card for possible long-distance calls. Carry a granola bar in your pocket. Food is often missed in jail. Carry in your pocket one photo ID with a good address. Do not carry IDs with different addresses. Do not carry anything you do not want the police to have, such as phone books or valuables. What do I do if I get arrested? You're advised to state clearly, I'm going to remain silent. I want to speak to a lawyer. Repeat this to any officer who questions you. Do not believe everything the police say. It is legal for the police to lie to you to get you to talk. When asked, you can give your name and address, show photo ID, and allow yourself to be photographed and fingerprinted for the purposes of confirming ID. Refusal to provide ID information will delay your release from jail. Remember your arresting officer's name and badge number. If you get to a phone, call the National Lawyers Guild and give names of other arrestees. Remain calm and prepare yourself for a possible wait in jail for 24 to 36 hours. What will happen to me if I'm arrested? You'll be handcuffed and driven to a jail or detention center and later taken to a court. In the police's discretion, you may be released from jail with a summons or desk appearance ticket, the DAT, which tells you when to return to court. If you are cha charged with a misdemeanor or felony, you will more likely go through the system to be arraigned before a judge. This means you'll be in jail for 24 to 36 hours. Don't talk to anyone but a lawyer about the facts of your arrest. A court employee will interview you about community ties, address, employment, and family to help judge the judge determine whether to set bail or release you on your own recognizance. It's okay to arrest, uh, answer these questions, just don't talk about your arrest. A lawyer will briefly meet you about your case. Get the lawyer's name and phone number. You will be arraigned on the charges against you before the judge. Your lawyer will enter your pleas. When in doubt, plead not guilty. Conditions for a release are set, either bail money or release on recognizance. The next court day is scheduled on a court slip for you to keep. You may be offered an adjournment in con uh, contemplation of dismissal. If you agree, your case is adjourned for six months. If you are not arrested during the six months, the charge is dismissed and the case is sealed. If you are arrested during the six months, the case can be brought back to court. If this happens, you still have all the rights you normally have in the criminal case, including the right to trial. And ACD and adjournment and contemplation of dismissal is not a plea of guilty. What do I do if the police knock at my door? If anyone knocks, don't open the door. Ask, who are you? If it is the police, ask, what do you want? We just want to talk to you. If they say they want to come in or talk to you, state, I have nothing to say. Slide your business card under the door. My lawyer will call you. Move away from the door and call the National Lawyers Guild. 
We have a search warrant. You reply, if you have a warrant, slip it under the door. If they do, read it to confirm it is the correct address. If it is, open the door, step back, and state, I'm going to remain silent, and I want to, I want to speak to a lawyer. A warrant is sometimes limited to a specific room. Make mental notes of where the police search. If they don't have a warrant, again, reply, I have nothing to say. Slide your business card under the door. We have an arrest warrant. You reply, if you have a warrant, slip it under the door. If they do, read it to determine if it is a warrant for your arrest or someone else. If it is for you or someone inside, tell them you're coming out. Step out and close and lock the door behind you and state, I'm going to remain silent. I want to speak to a lawyer. Do not say or do anything else. If the arrest warrant is for someone not inside your home, state the person is not there does not live there. And ask for the police to slip a business card under the door. Do not say or do anything. What if I'm not a U.S. citizen? There are far greater risks involved if you are arrested and are not a U.S. citizen. Talk to a lawyer before coming to a private protest. And always carry the name and telephone number of an immigration lawyer. Carry your immigration papers you might have, such as your green card, I-94, or work authorization as, uh, with you as well. So, National Lawyers Guild, nlg.org, forward slash Occupy. They got a bunch of phone numbers, none for um, Louisville. Here's some things about Noam Chomsky, who he is. He's a linguist out of MIT, famous for the revolution in linguistics when he said that children aren't just imitating people's speech patterns, but they're actually creatively speaking language. There's a faculty in your brain that uh, allows for all people to be able to develop and pick up language, and that's why even children are able to creatively use language. So that's uh, an internal faculty, and then that had a lot of implications. Uh, he's not just a MIT linguist, at, uh, a professor at MIT, but he's also known for his criticism of American foreign policy, uh, which he's been doing for decades. Noam Chomsky is known throughout the world for his groundbreaking work in linguistics and his relentless advocacy for democracy, freedom, and self-determination. Author of dozens of books, among his most recent our hopes and prospects, 9-11, was there an alternative in making the future? Occupations, interventions, empire, and resistance. In 1988, Chomsky received the Kyoto Prize in Basic Science, given to honor those who have contributed significantly to the scientific, cultural, and spiritual development of mankind. The prize noted that Dr. Chomsky's theoretical system remains an outstanding monument of 20th, 20th century science and thought. He can certainly be said that... Uh, to be one of the great academ uh, academicians and scientists of this century. He's also more quoted than Plato. Out of the top ten most referenced people of all time, he's the only living person. So he's the most living reference person in the world. And he's known throughout the world, but relatively unheard of in his own country. Uh, Chomsky supported the initiatives of the Occupy movement from its first weeks. He lives in Lexington, Massachusetts. So... So that's uh, the Occupy protest. So Howard Zinn died, uh, Edward Said, another man. Uh, People's History of the United States was a book that literally changed the consciousness of a generation. Here, Zinn developed with care, lucidity, and a comprehensive sweep his fundamental message about the crucial role of the people who remain unknown in carrying forward the endless struggle for peace and justice and about the victims of the system of power that create their own versions of history and seek to impose it. Later, his voices of the people's history, now in acclaimed theatrical and television production, brought to many the actual words of those forgotten or ignored people who have played such a valuable role in creating a better world. Howard's unique success in drawing the actions and voices of unknown people from the depths to which they had largely been consigned has spawned extensive historical research following a similar path, focusing on critical periods of U.S. history and turning to the record in other countries as well. A very welcome development. It is not entirely novel. There have been scholarly inquiries of particular topics before, but nothing to compare with Howard's broad and incisive uh, evocation of history from below, compensating for critical omissions in how U.S. history has been interpreted and conveyed. Howard's dedicated activism continued, literally without a break until the very end, even in his last years. When he was suffering from severe infirmity, and personal loss, though one would hardly know when it was meeting him or watching him speak tirelessly to captivated audiences all over the country. Whenever there was a struggle for peace and justice, Howard Zinn was there on the front lines, unflagging in his enthusiasm and inspiring in his integrity, engagement, eloquence, and insight. A light touch of humor in the face of adverse adversity. And dedication to nonviolence and sheer decency. So, Howard Zinn is the man. Howard Zinn is the man.
how is it in the people's history of the United States, which I had. I got a uh, graphic novel of the people's history of the United States, which is useful. But Occupy, Noam Chomsky. It's a world revolution. It's time for the 99% to stand up to stop the inequalities that have been happening in America for the last 30 years. It's been rich versus poor since the beginning. But in America, it's been the attack has been happening for the last 10 years. So, Johnny Tsunami, peace.